And on to some type 2 support with that, Andrew. Yeah, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so, um, I guess you know what's the talk about. 20 minutes, 14 slides, so going through the first two really quickly. Uh, I will have a summary of the current path set uh, for type 2 support under review upstream, and then I will share my concerns, my thoughts uh, about supporting uh, CXL cache in the kernel, and uh, maybe some potential uh, next steps or first steps for supporting uh, CXL cache. So, let me just start uh, presenting the use case uh, for uh, applying this uh, type 2 support uh, set in the kernel. This is for a network device that has CXL support. Uh, and the idea is to use it for uh, lowering the latency. Um, so we have uh, programmable uh, input-output buffers that relay on PCI bar uh, aperture. And the idea is to use a CXL mem, CXL region for, uh, for that. So hopefully getting better uh, latencies. Uh, CXL cast will be used for receiving. Um, it's complicated, so um, I cannot talk too much about it. Uh, so what type two, uh, a type two device requires in the, um, in the kernel, uh, well, first of all, uh, no one touching it, the CXL main at least, uh, no the BIOS, no the kernel, so no tax device, because it's a specific uh, memory for the, uh, for the device, and it needs to be written specifically, no uh, generic memory. So hopefully, um, if you apply the, the right um, the right flag to the memory, the BIOS do so, uh, no one is going to, to touch it, so perfect. Um, so CXL, the kernel core, has support for a PCI class, memory class, uh, type three. So we need um, to support PCI, uh, or the kind of uh, PCI classes like network, uh, Ethernet network uh, PCI. And for that, uh, well, we need to export the current um, CXL core API for doing initialization to those um, accelerated drivers. Um, we need to fix uh, some code that relates only on type three. Uh, and we need to have a way for creating the CXL uh, region from inside the kernel. Um, and well, last one, uh, once that is done, uh, to uh, not uh, create a DAX device from that, uh, from that uh, region. I suffered that, so that was uh, another work that I had to do after the first implementation because after uh, installing the driver, suddenly the VM crashed and I figured out, oh, someone is using it. So uh, that was uh, after the initial work. So uh, the summary for the um, uh, current patch set. So, well, I need to say uh, this is all based on uh, previous work from Dan Williams, uh, that his goal was to start the way for supporting type two, not specifically type two device. So, but most of the code is, is from that initial work. Um, so there, in the request for comment, the first part said, um, I uh, write my concerns about this kind of uh, the BIOS not doing the right thing, the kernel using that memory for that device, and then uh, maybe breaking things. Uh, I was told, well, if you attach the right flag, no one is going to touch it, so don't worry. Perfect. Uh, not completely convinced. <laughs> I, will, I will talk about that later a bit. Um, so I use initially uh, not a real device, uh, but an emulated one, because uh, I have problems for using the real one. We don't have it yet, the physical one. 
we are using emulation, emulation internally for validating the hardware design uh, that I couldn't use at that time. Uh, it was said, okay, that's fine, but you are not going to implement all the things through that, through that uh, emulated device. Um, that, mean, that meant that I had to, to uh, use the real device in the following patches. Um, other concern with the request for comment was um, that should we trust accelerator drivers for touching things uh, in, the, in these uh, CXL structs? Uh, I think the initial concern was that, the, the security thing, but I think it turns out it's more about manageability. Maybe I'm, uh, I'm grown about that, but that's my impression after the last reviews. And one uh, last, last thing is that that passage that has not CXL cache support. That uh, is the second part of my talk. So in V2, um, instead of just exporting the, car the current CXL uh, functions for in initialization, uh, an API was created for accelerated drivers to use it. So no touching uh, the structs uh, by themselves, but through that API. Um, I use the uh, SFC driver, network Ethernet driver for that, uh, commenting on, on the use case as, as well. Um, well, other things, moving um, just a specific parts of the headers that, was, uh, that were moved fully in the first, uh, uh, in the request for comment pass it, uh, and I was told to not to do so. Uh, there were some problems with the capabilities, the mandatory capabilities to, to work with uh, that led to, to another change for B3 uh, that we'll comment in a second. And also uh, some concerns about some patches being too complex uh, that I fixed in the B3. Um, so the more important change here was to add a capability field to um, the MemDev and also to the six support. Uh, and the idea is instead of, um, well, the CXL code uh, discovering the CXL registers, uh, initializing that uh, field, what, with, uh, what uh, it's found, and then the driver checking uh, or matching uh, the expected capabilities to be found with those ones. Uh, so removing some checks in that um, CXL uh, core for discovery. Um, I did that about um, removing complexity from uh, big, big uh, patches. That, by the way, it was in the original dump patches, <laughs> but I uh, just mixed that in the in the first one. So I think that um, has helped to to um, to understand better that uh, specific part. And um, well, um, I had um, a fix that I suffered, and I'm, I was glad yesterday because um, Thang uh, told me that he had the same issue with a risk condition between the CXL uh, MemDev being created, creating a CXL port, and then uh, a risk condition because, because uh, uh, the CXL port, CXL port is not there yet because it's, it goes through this uh, device model when the, the main code is trying to use it. Uh, that was not really uh, liked by Jonathan. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that is what I did. Um, <laughs> yeah, the the long and short is like there's a the there's an ENXIO error somewhere in the stack that just needs to be an EPROBE defer, and that seems to be appropriate. We just need to dig a little bit more into exactly why, for the sake of documentation. I think. Yeah, I I I need to to work on that. Um, so this is inside that patch that tries to solve another. Um, uh, risk condition between the CXL MemDev creation and the CX support not being still there. Uh, that I don't know if that is a corner case or is something that we can expect uh, often. I, my best understanding of the problem is it 
the ordering isn't guaranteed regardless, so it's a problem we're going to have to just deal with um, by having occasional retries if we yeah. detect a, a, a failure. <laughs> So I, I think Dan, you had suggested using a lock instead of a retry for this race. <laughs> well, well, no, I mean but, but this is dependent on like the the top of the hierarchy being probed and the devices being probed asynchronously, and they have to rendezvous. And so if the if the memdev wins, you got to re. You, you, I think we I think we have to retry, but. But yeah, I, I, I add the question to make sure we actually, if that is actually the problem. Um, but it seems like it. That's, we saw the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I believe it's data and math for. We have literally the same so, patch. <laughs> well, yeah, I think we gave you the patch, right? It's in the. No, actually, I made it separately, and then I saw yours. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's just the timing. Yeah. It can't find the root. Yeah. Okay. So it's not a corner case then. <laughs> Good. Well, they did. The idea is to, uh, well, in my case, to dig a bit deeper. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, if you can't find the root, it means probing hasn't finished, right? Yeah. Why do you expose the device if it's not finished? Right. Right. Yes, but again, why do you expose the PCI device if it's not pr fully probed? This is normal resource racing in the kernel. You defer and go around again. <laughs> <laughs> it's how it's handled all over the place. Another word for sloppy programming. Ooh. Who invited him? <laughs> Next year, he's not coming. <laughs> okay. okay, so, uh, so like, yeah. Uh, so, for B4, I think uh, that's the main problem that I need to investigate a bit further for understanding uh, and maybe uh, proposing something that uh, is like it. And the other problem, not major, but is uh, handling better CCFS files that I just uh, put there a check for, okay, if this is a type 2, uh, just forget about it. And I was told that maybe that could be better um, handle now instead of uh, keeping it going. Um, so the rest of that, uh, I hope, uh, uh, is fine. I don't know um, if uh, someone has uh, any comment for uh, uh, in my review now, but uh, I hope this is going well. And maybe in B4 or B5 can be integrated. So. Um, if that is the case, uh, I think a following work is um, at least in, with my, cons my concern of uh, the least concern is how to handle CXL reset um, that is not done. Uh, we don't have a code in the CXL core for uh, handling that possibility. Um, and the problem here is what are we going to do? I, I understand that for type three, uh, CXL reset is a really bad thing. Uh, maybe uh, this, the ship is going to crash, but I think it's more likely for type two where that kind of device reset included the CXL can happen. And then uh, if the HDMA um, registers are being committed, I guess we need to tell uh, the switches uh, that that's, that is not there or to keep that information for restoring the same information to the load registers after the reset, the reset because that uh, the way that it works is that the, that device is going to be proof after the reset. And it's going to go through all the CXL initialization. And I guess we don't want to have different um, HD, HDM range in that case. Do you think, I mean, is it, um is it the case that you, you're going to want to defi definitely always restore the same configuration or that you want to reset and, and do something different next time? Well, I think what we want to do is to keep the configuration. But uh, that's my, my idea. But I don't know if that's the, that's the case. Um, but in any way, we need to support that. Yeah. So one, one thing I, I found kind of obscure in the spec is the, the I think it, it, it 
the, the CXL functions that need to be reset um, are not explicitly listed. I mean, there, there's some obvious things like, like the HTM decoders and all, but all throughout the spec, like it mentions here and there, but it's, it's not clear to me 100% what the impact of reset is across the whole driver. Um, well, the whole driver, you mean the, the accelerator driver or the... Yeah. yeah. Where it doesn't say, you reset it. So that's kind of what... Th that's, that, that's the intended implication, is it's the equivalent okay. of a normal reset on a PCI device, except that we walled some things off because that was destructive. And this just puts back the rest. So yeah. I think, I don't think there's anything you're not supposed to reset. In any case, uh, it's a, a following work, so I don't want, because I want to talk about CXL cache. Uh, the other thing is to uh, have a way for uh, if the uh, device memory is taken by the kernel, to have a way of, <laughs> uh, I see, done. <laughs> but, but, I mean, the BIOS doesn't get to pick this. Like, the, the device, I mean, you're saying the, the device correctly said in the CDET, this is reserved in the BIOS, and nah, I'm going to put it in the memory map? I'm saying that uh, maybe we shouldn't trust the BIOS to do always, in all, in all cases, uh, the right thing, at least in the following years. I'm, I'm suffering now a problem with the BIOS related to other thing, and it's hard to get rid of that problem. So what I'm saying is, okay, maybe you can update the, the BIOS. If not, let's have a way of saying, hey, that's my memory. This, <laughs> yeah. this is a slippery slope. Fix yeah, fi fix the boss. Really, every time this happens and anything else in ACPI, if stuff's wrong, we paper over it, it's a nightmare. This is new hardware. It's not like it's been around for 10 years and we've got to deal with it. Yeah, but I mean, Just, how long is it going to take to, to fix the BIOS? We, well, until then, it won't work. They won't sell any product, they'll fix it quickly. <laughs> we can at least do like a, a warn tape from our workaround to like put them on blast, shame them, fix your BIOS, and then let people get well, work done. A, war a warning, sure, but if they do something like commit decoders that you can't then un uncommit. No, the, the, the decoders are fine, this is the type memory type. Patching ACPI tables. So, and you can do them in kernel. That's, if you're going to put a quirk in, that's where to do it. Don't do it in the driver stack. Do it as an overrided table, which is horrendous and gives you all sorts of warnings and you have to enable extra config options. So no one ever ships it, which is great. I mean, I think the problem is a little bit more fundamental that you have to also tell vendors that if you're trying to build a type two device, you have to have this memory type so that the BIOS won't screw with you Right, so it, it's, you, you can't fix stupid if someone builds a bad piece of hardware. Yeah. But then, I mean, yeah, I, I agree. If the BIOS doesn't treat it correctly, then yeah. fix the BIOS. I mean, and, okay. and, and fair enough. <laughs> and and I, I really, I, I mean, yeah. half facetiously, Jan, like, get out there and say, like, your vendor, this vendor X has this broken. Yeah. That should be loud and proud because that fundamentally breaks this type of device. Right. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. Find a new vendor. And in the end, I mean, if a driver, a bias vendor puts in something like that, he wants to sell the thing, and if it doesn't work correctly, he has an its own interest to get it fixed so that it works. Because well, it is new, so he has to build the bias. So it's not that he can say, oh, you know, it's long out of service. No, it's not just a bloody new thing. Yeah. So, so what I, I'm I guess, saying I guess, is maybe that is not. The right thing to do, but what I'm saying is maybe for the next two years. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 I think, I think okay. the, the no. thing no. <laughs> where, where... Okay. I, I think where the... Where the I think it's where, where, where the work is probably best spent is to warn when this happens yeah. and hands off and, and focus cycles elsewhere. Well, the, in our case, the warning is not needed because the machine is going to be partly... So, yeah. I, I mean, if the DAX device is created and you have it like mapped as right back and you try to load your host driver, it just gets if pissed this, off. If, it doesn't if, crash. If this memory that the kernel is going to use and the guys do. So, okay, that's, that's yeah, done. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about CXL cast. Um, so, I'm going to go straight because I don't have time to this one. That this is about uh, memory, allocating memory for that in the kernel uh, that needs to go. Okay, it needs to go through the, um, you know, uh, for security reasons uh, through IOMU, but there's a case of IOMU not there. 
So uh, anyway, it needs to go through the DMA, IOMU API, but the problem there is uh, we have a, a snooping cast in the uh, CXL um, root complex that needs to be uh, taken into account for not reserving more memory or not allowing more CXL cast uh, that uh, what that snooping cast uh, requires. So I think we need some kind of wrapper there. Uh, for that case and for other cases, I'm not sure the current IUMU implementation in the kernel supporting different, different devices is also doing this safely uh, because um, different reasons, but think that in our case, we are going to use IUMU for the normal DMA thing, and we are going to use DMA, uh, sorry, IUMU ATS for the CXL cast. So same IUMU mapping probably is going to be complicated uh, to, to ensure everything is going to be fine. So because I don't have time, I think that's the main point of, of what we need to do uh, to start discussing. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I am not a fan of how the current, the current kernel policy around ATS is designed, and I think CXL is, is, going to pu is pushing that off a cliff, and yeah, we need, and yeah, we need to have some more discussions about what does ATS look like in a world where we need to enable CXL cache devices, because yeah, the, the, the current ATS policy is based on, like, whether it's cabled into the system or not, and that's not appropriate yeah. for CXL. I think, I think it was, uh, I think initially that it was, once the ATS thing is done, the system trusts that device, but I think in some cases, uh, if it goes through the PCI, there's a routing there, and if the ATS flag is there, and the, the right routing is not there for that ATS, it's not going to work. But I don't think that is the case for CXL, anyway. Um, might be a stupid question, but does this have implications for the Linux memory model? Uh, like cache misses and, and TLB flushes and so? No, kind of no, because that is uh, the CPU. Oh, yes, but does it need to, so... This, that's the, the TLB is for the CPU. Has anyone so. checked, like? No, the, 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 uh, this is the problem. Is the, the hardware, you don't, you don't have to software manage it. Uh, uh, may so I ask? Yeah. Yeah, oh, okay. Thank you. Um, uh, here I want to say, the, as the, currently the ATS is work for the PCI root complex. And that means the ATS, most uh, IOMMU uh, service, uh, the uh, translation agent is just like uh, uh, treat, of, uh, treat it as a traditional uh, PCIe uh, TLP package. So uh, if T ATS any mode, I think uh, the, the endpoint can easily uh, use the use the ATC and uh, and let ATC to send the translation request to the to the to the host I think um, uh, maybe uh, the current uh, uh, IOMMU uh, on the host could serve serve like this way so I think uh, uh, I, I thought uh, uh, one we enabled ATS ATS um, uh, most of the 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 catch uh, the the type to uh, the the C tile CXL.catch could work properly with the ATS service. And the second, if we disable the ATS, that would matter problem. That's the current IOMMU hardware in the host. Maybe cannot cannot uh, IO bridge cannot bridge the CXL catch channel. So that's what would involve another uh, hardware uh, uh, circuit. Um, so, uh, so I want to uh, ask uh, uh, ask the uh, uh, guys in this room, uh, uh, what do you think about uh, this uh, description, or how do you think about uh, the uh, uh, ATS work with the six L dot catch or disable so it? So maybe we could talk that offline. Uh, so I have, if you go through the slides, I have uh, and, uh, the last one where I put there a potential um, roadmap or actions to follow. Uh, so please uh, comment uh, in that channel that we have for that. So I'm done. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for